Jai Chanendra and Pranam everyone. Hope all the Paswis are in great chatter. My name is Megha Doshi and this is the fifth in the eight series videos we have prepared for pollution in coordination with YJA. In the Shvetamba tradition, Kalpa Sutra, a Jain scripture written by Acharya Bhadra Bahu Swami in 3rd century BC is read to the congregation or Jain Sangh from the fourth through the last day of pollution. The Kalpa Sutra describes the life of Bhagwan Mahavir and other Tirthankars, the conduct of lay people and life of Acharyas. Today is the fifth day of pollution and traditionally the auspicious dreams of Bhagwan Mahavir's mother, Queen Trishna, are celebrated in a special ceremony. So today we will have, we will take a pause from per pollution kartavyas and talk about our 24th Tirthankar, Bhagwan Mahavir. The ultimate goal of Bhagwan Mahavir's life was spiritual upliftment, and his life was the epitome of humbleness. He had many moments in his life where he inspired us to follow certain morales to reach liberation. I want to highlight just a few today. Choosing a few in his praise, his compassion, and his mercy does no justice, but is a token tribute to the most benevolent soul in this universe. Prince Vardaman, who became our last Tathankar of this time cycle, was born on Chaitra Sut Teras or the 13th day of the waxing moon cycle of the month of Chaitra. His mother, Trishla Mata, had 14 auspicious dreams. They proclaimed that Queen King Siddharth, his father, asked the dream interpreters and scholars the meaning of those dreams. They proclaimed that Queen Trishla would give birth to a Tirthankar. King Siddharth was filled with so much joy from the news of the coming baby that he gave away all his expensive jewellery that he had worn to the maid who delivered the news. The king's immediate reaction was to spread the joy rather than keeping it to himself. This is a very important point to think about. When we are happy beyond compare, do we try to spread the happiness to all those around us? Or do we become self-centered and make the day only about us? While in the womb, Bhagwan Mahavir had once been very still so as not to disturb or cause any pain to his mother. Not feeling any movement, Queen Trishna was very worried that something was wrong with the baby in the womb. Realizing how worried his mother was on his behalf, he decided not to take the religious vow of renunciation or diksha and leave his family as long as his parents were alive. Even as a fetus, Bhagwan was so focused and committed to minimize others' pain as much as possible. Do we care enough for our parents and loved ones? Maybe we can take a take few minutes out and ask if we can do anything for them. Bhagwan Mahavir's birth brought good fortune to all the citizens of his kingdom. Hence, he was named Vardaman at birth, meaning ever-increasing prosperity. His birth was celebrated with much joy and pomp, and he was taken to Mount Meru for, by Lord Indra for his Janma Abhishek. Despite having several worldly pleasures and services at his command, he exhibited a kind and virtuous nature. He came to be known as Mahavir, the great hero, as he fearlessly picked up snakes and showed courageous acts even as a child. After his parents' demise, he began donating all his belongings and wealth to the needy and to those that came to him. Every day, he would donate many gold coins, jewels, precious stones, and clothes. This unique and unprecedented charity impressed upon the minds of the people that charity is a double blessing. It blesses those who receive as well as those who give. At the age of 30, he accepted lifelong renunciation. Bhagwan Mahavir, who grew up in an affluent family with all the comfort and luxury, immediately after Diksha became merciless towards his body. As karma would have it, unforeseen circumstances started occurring around him. On the same evening, a swarm of honeybees attacked him. He also faced a humiliating incident from a cow herder. Lord Indra offered to help, but he refused by saying, a soul has never and will never attain Kevalgnan with anybody's help. 
For 12 and a half years, Lord Mahavir faced some of the most severe afflictions and prevailed over them with serene calmness and composure. He conquered the root cause of karmic bondage and as time passed, he started controlling them instead of they controlling him. In effortless way, Lord Mahavir defeated anger and other kashais or passions. Post Diksha, his short naps of few minutes totaling nearly 48 minutes in a span of 12 years. The 48 minute nap also was not voluntary, but the exhausted body gave away in those minutes. A glimpse into his journey after Diksha is astounding. He never stayed in the same position or location for long. He never sat cross-legged on the floor to rest his body. Rather, he always stood in meditation. His only meal was in the third prahar of the day and his movement to other locations was also in the same time frame. There were several penances he observed during this time, one of which was an astounding six, month, six months long fast without food and water. In all circumstances, good or bad, he was calm and serene. The only feeling present in his mind was that of compassion. Until a Tirthankar attains omniscience, he does not preach. They do not consider themselves fit to preach anyone until they have gained complete knowledge or Keval Gnan. Imagine our world if we all had the same thought process today. Many conflicts could be avoided if we made sure not to make accusations without all the facts. Here I am right now talking to you guys about how should we live our lives. I will admit that I am not an expert nor am I omniscient and this is not a preaching. I am simply stating the examples from the lives of our Tirthankars. Bhagwan Mahavir's years were ruthlessly harm, hammered with nails in his last birth, which was a consequence of his past karma. Understanding that it was a result of his past sin, he took, he took this heinous act in stride and paid off his karmic debt. Point being, you reap what you sow. In other words, you eventually have to face up to the consequences of your actions or karmas. Therefore, one should try to minimize the accumulation of karmas in the first place. With years of perseverance, discipline, meditation and focus, he attained enlightenment or Keval Gnan at the age of 42. He was worshipped by 14,000 sadhus, 36,000 sadhvis and millions of shravaks, but never did he experience even an iota of pride. Using foresight, he realized he was in the twilight of his life cycle. At this juncture, Bhagwan Mahavir continuously gave sermons for 16 prahars or 48 hours without a break and showered his blessing for a heart-wrenching last time. Lord Mahavir knew about the immense love or rag or attachment Gautam Swami, his first disciple, had towards him. That was preventing him or Gautam Swami from attaining Keval Gnan. He thus sent Gautam Swami far away on the pretext of advising a Brahmin, knowing that this act later would benefit Gautam Swami and lead to his liberation or moksha. When Gautam Swami realized that Bhagwan Mahavir had attained Nirvan, he couldn't stop his tears. Soon he realized why Bhagwan had sent him away and realized that nothing is permanent, including his relationship with Bhagwan Mahavir. He got rid of his attachment destroyed his ghati karmas and attained keval gnan. What we must take from this is that there is nothing permanent in this material world. Everything will go away sooner or later, which is why we must attain liberation to achieve infinite bliss. There is still a lot of inspiring incidences of good character from Bhagwan Mahavir's life. When you do get an opportunity, do read about his life. The question I would want you all to reflect on today is, what is one quality of Bhagwan Mahavir we can implement in our lives and follow it for a lifetime? Just one quality and I'm sure it will take us far on the path of liberation. Thank you for listening. Jai Janendra.